The anime begins with a teacher teaching at Hanuji Academy about the history of how Germany's post-war democracy gave way to fascism. A student named Mako Mankin Shoko is seen sleeping in the class. A man named Ira Gamagori breaks the door to talk to the students. The teacher tells him to leave the class, but the man says he is the official. It turns out he is the disciplinary committee chairperson. He warns the students not to break any rules of the academy or else they will face consequences. While he is speaking, a student sitting next to Mako throws a gas bomb at him and flees away. Although he tried hard enough, he at last got caught up. The student shows one star Goku uniform. It turns out that he stole it. He wears it as his body changes to fight Ira, who has three stars on his Goku uniform but fails. At last, Ira removes the uniform from his body. He orders the students to listen and remember the rules will be applied as long as he is alive. Ira sees Lady Satsuki, Satsuki Kirian, who rules the area, and orders the students to salute her. The next day, a transfer student named Ryuko Meitoi is walking down the streets and eating lemons. A thug leader named the Great Lighting Speed Mataro tries to catch her wallet, but it gets bad for them, both as they have to apologize and run for their lives. In the group of thugs, there was Mako's brother. Mako beats him up and takes him to school. All this was witnessed by Ryuko. Ryuko goes to school and sits with Mako at her request. While they are walking through the school hallway, they hear Lady Satsuki coming, so everyone bows. Mako explains the Lady Satsuki ranking and starting uniform to Ryuko. Mako explains to her the ruling difference. Students with more stars live in a better place. Mako does not have one, so people like her live in slums. Ryuko bravely goes in front of Lady Satsuki and shows her the half-scissor. Ryuko asks her if she knows who owns the other half, and the Lady Satsuki says, what if it was her? This enrages Ryuko while everyone is watching her in shock. Enraged Ryuko attacks Lady Satsuki, but Takaharu Fukuroda, who has a two-star Goku uniform, stops her. Both are enraged in a little fight. Lady Satsuki orders Fukuroda to capture her scissors, but Ryuko runs away. Lady Satsuki's order is being punished for not being able to complete it. In the evening, it rains heavily as Ryuko goes back to home. She apologizes to her father for not killing his murderers and prays for more power. She suddenly falls deep into a cave beneath her home. All this was a scene by Eikuro Mikasuji. Ryuko is surrounded by rocks. Due to her injuries, her blood dropped on the rock. Suddenly, a voice from behind the rocks asks for more blood. A sailor uniform comes in front of her and demands she wear him. She refused, but he forcefully let her wear him. It turns out it is a Goku uniform with the name Senketsu, which was made by Ryuko's father, Ishin Matoi. An announcement is made about the execution of Mako in an hour if Ryuko does not show up, so Ryuko arrives and goes one-on-one -on -one with Fukuroda. Fukuroda was given one last chance to prove its worth. With the help of Senketsu, she finishes him off. The Lady Satsuki inquires about the attire as well as the scissors. She is told by Ruko that his father crafted this clothing, and that the scissors were left there by the person who murdered her father. Ishin Metoid is brought to mind by Lady Satsuki. Following the conclusion of this discussion, Ruko will return. But all of a sudden, Ruko passed out. Mako is the one who ushers her inside the house and introduces her to her parents, Barazo and Sukuyo. Because Barazo is a physician, he takes very good care of her. A brand new two-star Duko uniform was presented to the leader of the tennis club, Omiko Hakudate, by the woman. The conversation about Ruko is currently taking place in Lady Satsuki's room. The following day, Ruko and Mayo go to school, where Mayo receives a detention as a consequence for missing practice the day before. Ruko engages Senketsu in combat, but he does not respond leading to her defeat at the hands of Omiko. Ruko receives assistance from Eikuro, who reveals to her that he is their instructor. Eikuro explains to Ruko how to activate the uniform and challenges her to prove her worth by beating Omiko. Ruko accepts the challenge. Yuko gets Sekitako from Eikuro, which will make it easier for her to use Senketsu. Another round of fighting between Omiko and Ruko, this time with Ruko emerging victorious after a battle. Ruko issues a challenge to the Lady Satsuki to engage in a one-on-one -on -one battle, and the Lady Satsuki accepts. The Lady Satsuki makes use of her secret sword, Bakuzen, which is significantly more potent than the scissors. Ruko is warned by Senketsu that she only has 15 minutes left before she passes out. Ruko emerges victorious from the match and quickly leaves the area. The past shows how Lady Satsuki was impressed by the beauty of her wedding dress named Junketsu. Junketsu and Senketsu are the only outfits made entirely of live fibers. Eikura is teaching class K. Eikura tells Ruko to meet her where they met before. Ruko asks Eikura to tell her about his identity and how he has information about the uniforms. 
So Akira tells her that the Goku uniforms are made with a certain amount of life fibers according to the number of stars. Life fibers are fighting fibers that have a life of their own. Only the Kyrian clan and Ishin know about this. Akira also hates Kyrian's nepotism. He was working with Ishin, and after Ishin's death, Akira received a letter from his side in which Ishin tells him to pass the information to Ryuko. In the sewing club lab, they are experimenting with 50% life fiber, which does not end in the way they thought. Lady Satsuki arrives at the secret lab for Junketsu. Her mother advises her not to do it, but she wears it anyway to defeat Ryuko. Lady Satsuki and Ryuko indulge in a fight, and finally Ryuko masters the art of wearing her suit. Before leaving, Lady Satsuki challenges her to beat every student in the academy, then she will get the answers. Senketsu is currently getting washed in the slums. When Mako finally comes to, she informs Ruko that anyone with a no-star day today will be kicked out of school. Ira finally shows up after a while and explains everything to Ruko, but before she leaves, she teases her about the way she's dressed. Ruko was still in her jammies because Senketsu was being dried up. Ira issues a challenge to Ruko to get to school no earlier than 8.30 in the morning, and she accepts it. Mako, who portrays herself as a low-income, average student with a broken hand, is introduced to Ryuko and Mako. They made the decision to take her with them, but sometime in the middle of a journey, they noticed her true colors. She is the head of the disciplinary committee's trap development division, and she attempted to seize Senketsu but was unsuccessful. She had the goal of becoming powerful so that she could take Lady Satsuki's place. Ryuko and Mako were finally able to make it in time, but Mako was kicked out of school since Ira overheard her plot. The following day, Sumivu Kinegais makes his way into the castle in quest of Ryuko. While he was standing in the garden, he spotted her. It was Kuzanashuki Yagaruma, the general manager of the gardening club, who approached him about the opportunity. He gives him a beating since he cut him off in mid-sentence. During his time at the school, Mako was escorted by a few individuals to the biology club. When Riko arrives, the scientist informs her that she will be the first experiment, but Ryuko manages to save her. Senketsu informs Riko that her blood is getting saltier. Mako was the target of several needle strikes that were launched by Tusumugo. As Riko was preparing to eat, Tusumugu launched an attack on him. He assures her that Mako is doing well. Senketsu gives her the order to flee, and she complies. Riko is taken captive by Tusumugu, who informs her that she is not allowed to morph in front of her. Lori explains to the Lady Satsuki that the connection can be served by the needles while they are in the Lady Satsuki's room. The following day, Senketsu warns Riko not to wear him because Tsumugu is pursuing her, but she decides to wear him instead. Riko is being pursued by Tsumugu. Sumihu is about to launch an attack. Right at the moment when he is going to attack, all of the little clubs assault Ryuko, causing her and Tusumugu to flee. She overpowers him while she is in the restroom and demands that she hand over Senketsu to him. At the very moment when Tusumugu is about to fire at his gun, Senketsu reveals himself and saves Ryuko. Tusumugu is briefed by Mako on the significance of how one should present oneself. After she had returned the dress to Ryuko, she exited the room. Jack Azure appears and instructs Tusumugu to reject him and give her Ruko and Sentuski instead of keeping them for himself. Tusumugu refutes the accusation and then departs the region. At Akira's residence, Ruko comes to in the morning. Akira overhears Tusumugu, telling a friend that he is giving her a chance and that he will come back for her if she fails. Ruko requests an explanation for everything that has happened. Akira reveals to Tusumugu that he is a member of his team, which is also referred to as the nudist beach. She disregards him in a casual manner. A significant number of fibers have been brought to the academy. Sanjiyama approaches Lady Satsuki because he is eager to compete against Ryuko and demonstrate his worth. The authorization to do so is granted by Lady Satsuki. The following day, he makes the challenge public and Ryuko shows up. While everything is going on, Mistress Reijo calls the Lady Satsuki while she is dressed in her bridal attire. The Lady Satsuki has come to the conclusion that it is not worth her time to watch the match. Ruko won't be after some struggles. He then goes to Lori and requests that he sue his eyes, which Lori complies with. When he returns to the fight, he is about to finish off Ruko when his clothes start to overheat. Sanajiyama goes to express his gratitude to Lady Satsuki. Ruko makes the decision to learn the motive behind the murder of his father. The following day has arrived, when Ruko and Mako are ready to start eating lunch. The president of the knife throwing club suddenly throws a knife at Mako. After some time has passed, the president of the tight rope walking club also arrives. Both of them are defeated by Ryuko. Ryuko learns from Mako about the need to amass more stars in order to have a better life. Ryuko has made the decision to establish a fighting club. The boxing club receives Lady Satsuki's blessing, and Ira gives over all of the necessary documentation. 
Mako agrees to put in more effort. After Ryuko promotes her to the position of president of the club, they had to engage in a lot of combat with a variety of clubs before they were able to earn one star. They quickly earned two stars, but everyone was now preoccupied with their own lives, and Ryuko found herself longing for the simpler times. Before the next battle, Ryuko announces her resignation, which infuriates Mako and her family. Mako steps in and warns Maiko that if she doesn't finish Ryuko, she will deduct three stars from her score. Macho fights her out of greed, but she stops short of killing her. She doesn't learn from her errors and instead weeps over them. Ryuko explains to Lady Satsuki the truth that people are not fragile creatures. The first Tenuji Academy natural elections have been announced, and the championship match will take place in one week. All four elites left. Both the city and the academic institutions are in the midst of a crisis. It would appear that Lady Satsuki is breaking her own norms, which she has developed over the course of many years. Ryuko and Mako go to Ryuko's old mansion that was destroyed by fire. She thinks back on times gone by and searches for any hint, but to no avail. They ride her way back when their motorcycle ran out of fuel. Ira declines the offer and offers a ride instead. Ira is assaulted by a group that goes by the name Automotive Airsoft Club. Ira encourages Ryuko to move back since he is going to handle this situation by himself. Ira recalls a day five years earlier when he attempted to save a youngster who was being bullied but was unsuccessful, and a different woman ended up saving the boy instead. Because she left such an impression on him, he has not wavered in his commitment to her. Once a week has passed, around 8.30, everyone gets together again. Ryuko is given a privileged position alongside four other aristocrats by Lady Satsuki. At the polling area, Ira was the first person to engage in combat with Ryuko. Ira has issued a challenge to Ryuko. Ryuko is told by Lady Satsuki that if she wins all four, then she will reveal all of the solutions to her. The Lady Satsuki announces that the contest will begin at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Ikura travels to see Ryuko. He puts Mako under a deep freeze and orders Ryuko to retreat, but she remains resolute. He is instructed by Ryuko to remove the ice from Mako and to leave her alone. During the contest, Lady Satsuki recalls a fight she had with Ira five years ago over who would run the middle school. This fight was about who would rule the school. Lady Satsuki was successful in persuading him to assist her in completing her task. Ryuko wins. Ira, who saw it as a source of shame, made an attempt to end his life, but Lady Satsuki prevented him from doing so. As announced by the Lady Satsuki, the next battle will be between Ryuko and Hoka Inumuta. The Lady Satsuki recalls that the incident occurred five years ago, and he hacked into her system. She did not choose to chastise him, but rather welcome him to accompany her on his mission. That is how Lady Satsuki initially connected with Hoka. Because Ira is now on the same level as Mako, the two of them sit down together to watch the match. The fight has begun. After a brief round of conflict, just as Ryuko was ready to finish off Hoka, he retreated. Jack Azure believes that Lady Satsuki will not agree with this, but Lady Satsuki actually does. Ira and Mocha join Hauk. Ira and Hauk are able to cause a disturbance despite the fact that they do not appear to get along very well with one another. Therefore, Jack Uzer and Ryuko will compete in the next match. The events of the past demonstrate that Jack Uzer was Lady Satsuki's best friend, and that he made a pledge to always remain by her side. The battle between Jack Uzer and Ryuko was a difficult one due to the fact that Jack Uzer was flying, but in the end, Ryuko prevailed. Now Jack Uzer joins Hauk, Ira, and Mocha. The most recent battle was against Sana Jiyama. Ryuko instructs him to get going so that they can continue where they left off some time ago and finish what they started. As we start the fourth round, Nui Haram was the one who put a stop to the conflict. Sanajiyama orders her to move out of his way, but she slashes her hair with her finger instead. The remaining three elites, along with Mocha, are joined by Sandiyama. Even Hak does not know Nui. It was her mother who dispatched Nui. Nui insisted that she and Ryuko have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Ryuko is under the impression that she is joking about it until Nui reveals the other half of the scissors blade to her. Ryuko confronts her and demands to know why she took her mother's life. Because of the suit and the scissors, Nui explains to her. A flashback reveals that Nui went to Ishin to inquire about the costume. Instead, he showed her the scissors that are capable of severing live fibers instead. Both engage in combat, and as a result, Ishin loses her left eye. Ishin was cut in half by the scissors that Nui had fashioned for himself and Nui fled the scene with the remaining half. Ryuko's temper flares as a result of all of this. Ryuko is having a conversation with Tsumu Gunaikura. They become aware of everything and make the decision to intervene. Hence, Tsumu intervenes and makes an attempt to capture Nui. This will give Aikura enough time to administer the dose that will revitalize her, but she has chosen to hold back for the time being. Lei Satsuki intervenes in the situation and asks Nui 
why she is acting in such a manner. The duel between Ryuko and Nui Hauk warned Mako that she would perish if she did not stop what she was doing. Mako and her family intervene on her friend's behalf in order to save her. Just in the nick of time, Mako gives her a stern warning not to proceed. Ryuko is reminded by Mako that the objective was not to kill the person who murdered her father. Ryuko's objective was to develop a deeper relationship with her father. While Ryuko has been listening to all of this, Mako has thanked her. Ryuko apologizes to Senketsu. Lady Satsupi warns Nui to never set foot in her presence again. She will handle anything pertaining to Ryuko and Senketsu on her own.